Mercy. The year is 1888, a time when London stands at the crossroads of history. London, a city of contrasts, shudders under the weight of its own duality. Gas lamps cast a sickly yellow glow upon cobblestone streets, creating an atmosphere both enchanting and foreboding. Fog, thick and suffocating, rolls in from the Thames, enveloping the city in a ghostly embrace. It shrouds the city in an eerie silence, broken only by the clatter of horse-drawn carriages and the distant cries of street vendors echoing through the mist. This is the Victorian era, an age of industry and empire but also of poverty and despair where the opulence of the wealthy starkly contrasts with the squalor of the poor. Nowhere is this disparity more evident than in the East End, a labyrinthine slum where crime festers in the shadows and hope is a rare commodity. Whitechapel, a particularly notorious district within the East End, is home to the city's most desperate souls, living in overcrowded tenements and struggling to survive. It is here, amidst the overcrowded tenements and dimly lit alleyways, that a nightmare is about to unfold, one that will haunt the city for generations. A killer stalks the night, moving silently through the shadows. He is a phantom, preying on the most vulnerable women forced by circumstance into a life on the streets, their lives marked by hardship and fear. His reign of terror will forever be etched into the annals of history as the sinister legacy of Jack the Ripper, a name that still sends shivers down the spine. The faint glow of dawn on August 31, 1888, revealed a scene of unspeakable horror. The city of London, still shrouded in the early morning mist, was about to awaken to a nightmare that would haunt its streets for years to come. On a cobblestone street lying cold and lifeless was the body of Polly Nichols. She was the first of many to fall victim to a terror that would grip the East End. Her throat, slashed with surgical precision, told a tale of brutality that chilled even the most hardened police officers. The meticulous nature of the wounds suggested a killer with a terrifying level of skill and intent. The news spread through Whitechapel like wildfire, igniting a spark of fear that would soon engulf the entire city. Panic and dread seeped into the hearts of Londoners as they realized a monstrous predator was among them. Polly, a woman trapped in the unforgiving cycle of poverty and despair, became the first victim in a string of murders that would come to define the East End's darkest days. Her life, marked by hardship, ended in a manner that was both tragic and horrifying. The brutality of her murder, the sheer savagery inflicted upon her, sent shockwaves through the community. People gathered in somber vigils, their faces etched with fear and sorrow as they mourned the loss of one of their own. The police, initially dismissive, soon realized they were dealing with a killer unlike any they had encountered before. The investigation took on a new urgency, as they scrambled to understand the mind of a murderer who seemed to strike without warning or reason. The killer, however, was far from finished. A mere 10 days after Polly Nichols' murder, the East End trembled once more. On September 8th, the body of Annie Chapman was discovered in the backyard of a tenement building. The brutality visited upon her surpassed even the horrific murder of Polly Nichols. Her abdomen had been mutilated, her intestines removed with a chilling precision that spoke of a macabre knowledge of human anatomy. Panic gripped Whitechapel. The killer, now dubbed Jack the Ripper by a sensationalist press, was moving with impunity, seemingly unstoppable. The fog-choked streets, once familiar and commonplace, transformed into corridors of fear. Women, especially those forced to walk alone at night, lived in terror of becoming the Ripper's next victim. With each passing murder, the Ripper's grip on Whitechapel tightened. The city, accustomed to poverty and crime, found itself paralyzed by fear. The killer's ability to vanish into thin air after each gruesome act only amplified the terror. He became a specter, his name whispered in hushed tones, his legend growing with every life he claimed. The police, despite their best efforts, seemed powerless to stop him. The Ripper's knowledge of the human body, coupled with his brazen disregard for the law, made him a formidable adversary. The streets of Whitechapel, once teeming with life, became eerily quiet as residents, fearing for their lives, retreated indoors after dark. The city held its breath caught in the suffocating grip of a nightmare. Section 5, A Desperate Hunt. 
the police investigation and its challenges. Scotland Yard, faced with mounting public pressure and the sheer brutality of the crimes, launched a massive manhunt. Detectives, overwhelmed by the sheer volume of potential leads and hampered by the limitations of 19th century forensic science, struggled to make headway. The fog that shrouded Whitechapel seemed to conceal not only a killer, but also the very clues that could lead to his capture. Every alleyway, every darkened doorway became a potential hiding place for the Ripper. The police interviewed hundreds of suspects, from local butchers to eccentric surgeons, but each lead ultimately ran cold. The Ripper, it seemed, was a master of evasion, melting back into the shadows after each kill, leaving behind nothing but terror and despair. Section 6. Whispers in the Fog, The Suspects and Theories The lack of a concrete suspect fueled a frenzy of speculation. Theories about the Ripper's identity ran rampant, whispered in hushed tones in the pubs and back alleys of Whitechapel. Was he a doctor, driven mad by a fascination with anatomy? A barber, skilled with a blade? Or perhaps a sinister figure from London's upper class, indulging in a twisted game of death amongst the city's most vulnerable? Every rumor, every shred of speculation was scrutinized, debated, and ultimately discarded. The Ripper, despite the best efforts of amateur sleuths and armchair detectives, remained an enigma, a faceless embodiment of evil that continued to haunt the fog-choked streets of London. Section 7 The Dear Boss Letter Taunting the Police Fueling the Frenzy As the investigation floundered, a chilling new element was introduced to the case, adding a sinister twist to an already horrifying series of events. A letter, penned in a blood-red ink and signed simply Jack the Ripper, arrived at the Central News Agency, sending shockwaves through the community. The letter, filled with taunts and boasts about the murders, sent a chill down the spines of even the most hardened investigators. It was a brazen act of defiance, mocking the police's inability to catch the killer. The Dear Boss letter, as it came to be known, was just the first in a series of bizarre and often rambling letters that the police attributed to the Ripper. Each letter seemed to taunt the authorities further, deepening the mystery. These letters, whether genuine or the work of a morbid prankster, further fueled the media frenzy surrounding the case, turning Jack the Ripper into a macabre celebrity. His crimes were splashed across the front pages of every newspaper in the country, captivating the public's morbid curiosity and ensuring that his name would be remembered for generations to come. The press, hungry for sensational stories, seized upon the Ripper murders, churning out lurid accounts that both terrified and captivated the public. The fog-shrouded streets of Whitechapel, the gruesome details of the murders, and the elusive nature of the killer all combined to create a narrative that was as compelling as it was terrifying. One of the most enduring suspects circulated by the press was a man known as Leather Apron, a Jewish immigrant who worked in the leather trade. Despite a lack of evidence, the press painted Leather Apron as a monstrous figure, playing on existing anti-Semitic sentiments to create a scapegoat for the Ripper's crimes. Section 9, Canonical 5, The Ripper's Ghastly Handiwork While the Ripper's reign of terror encompassed numerous murders and assaults, five victims, known as the Canonical Five, are most closely linked to the case. These women, Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly, were all murdered within a three-month period in 1888, their deaths bearing the chilling hallmarks of the Ripper's brutality. The murders of the Canonical Five, with their escalating savagery and the Ripper's taunting letters to the police, cemented his place in criminal history. The East End, once simply a poverty-stricken district, became synonymous with fear, its very name a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk in the shadows of even the most civilized societies. Section 10. The Mystery Endures, Jack the Ripper's Elusive Identity Despite the passage of over a century, the identity of Jack the Ripper remains one of history's most enduring mysteries. Countless books, documentaries, and investigations have attempted to unmask the killer. But the fog of time, combined with the limitations of 19th century forensic science, has kept his secrets closely guarded. Was Jack the Ripper a doctor? A madman? or simply a shadowy figure who vanished into the anonymity of Victorian London. 
the answer, lost to time, continues to fascinate and frustrate, ensuring that the legend of Jack the Ripper, the phantom who terrorized Whitechapel, will continue to be told and retold for generations to come. Section 11. Legacy of a Nightmare. Jack the Ripper's Impact on Criminology. The Jack the Ripper case, for all its horror, had a profound impact on the development of criminal investigation. The case highlighted the need for more sophisticated forensic techniques, leading to advancements in fingerprinting, crime scene photography, and psychological profiling. The Ripper's crimes also forced society to confront the plight of the poor and the dangers faced by women, particularly those living on the margins of society. The case served as a grim reminder of the importance of social reform and the need to address the root causes of crime. Section 12. A Shadow Across Time. The Enduring Fascination with Jack the Ripper. The enduring fascination with Jack the Ripper speaks to our deepest fears and our insatiable curiosity about the dark side of human nature. The case, with its blend of history, mystery, and horror, continues to captivate our imaginations, reminding us that even in the most civilized societies, darkness can lurk just beneath the surface. Jack the Ripper, the Phantom of Whitechapel, may never be unmasked, but his legend serves as a chilling reminder of the fragility of order and the enduring power of evil to cast a long shadow across time. 